योग कर्मसु कौशल गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल आई डॉक्टर नारायण बसेर फ्रॉम स्कूल ऑफ पेट्रोलियम मैनेजमेंट पंडित दीनदयाल एनर्जी यूनिवर्सिटी थैंक यू जी सी ह्यूमन रिसोर्स डेवलपमेंट सेंटर ऑफ गुजरात यूनिवर्सिटी फॉर गिविंग मी एन अपॉर्चुनिटी टू कनेक्ट विथ यू एंड डिलीवर माय सेशन ऑन करेंसी एंड इंटरेस्ट रेट स्वैप्स आई थैंक प्रोफेसर डॉक्टर जगदीश जोशी प्रोफेसर एंड डायरेक्टर ऑफ यू जी सी एच आर डी सी ऑफ गुजरात यूनिवर्सिटी लेट मी शेयर यू दैट एच आर डी सी गुजरात यूनिवर्सिटी इज रैंक एज फिफ्टीन इन इंडिया एंड नंबर वन इन गुजरात इट इज अ पायोनियर एंड क्रिएटेड अ हिस्ट्री बाय ऑर्गेनाइजिंग द फर्स्ट ऑफ इट्स काइंड ऑनलाइन रिफ्रेशर कोर्स इन इंडिया इन द ईयर टू थाउजेंड एटीन नाइनटीन अबाउट टू थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड पार्टिसिपेंट्स हैव अटेंडेड इट द फर्स्ट ऑफ इट्स काइंड ऑनलाइन annual refresher program in english language teaching with record break 9000 participants in the year 2019-20 the first ever online short term course on e content development during lockdown and unlock one let me share that more than 100 courses with about 4000 participants have successfully completed this short term courses the participants are from across the country dear friends this is a great opportunity for me to interact with you on this online platform my topic is currency and interest rate swaps let me share my screen with you so that you can have a simultaneous visual impact while discussion i hope my screen is visible to everyone so today's session is on currency and interest rate swaps the objective of today's session is to discuss swap contracts essentially on currency and interest rates which are relatively new instruments for hedging long term interest rate risk and foreign exchange risk you all are aware that swaps are the part of derivative contracts there are large number of derivative instruments available in in india for hedging the variety of risk interest rate risk and foreign exchange risk are the integral part of any business today we are living in the globalized world where our transactions are not limited to only single country but we are doing transactions across the globes wherein many currencies are involved i am not talking only in terms of export import sort of transactions but even for the businesses for raising funds for generating funds for the businesses now companies are accessing the global financial markets and you all are aware that most of the nations have their own currencies and their interest rate structures and the currency rates are highly volatile and hence there is a huge interest rates interest rate risk and foreign exchange risk involved into international transactions so how swap contracts helps these participants exporter importer fund raisers banks 
many more participants are there in this market how swap contracts are helping them we will see we will discuss today we have largely future options forwards earlier these were the very normal instruments we used to uh, study about while we talk on hedging the price risk swap contracts are relatively new it is a swap means exchange normally we understand swap means exchange what we call it in gujarati adla badli you know exchange here what is going to be exchanged it is none other than the exchange of cash flows exchange of cash flows that means two parties are there and two parties agree on certain terms and conditions under which they are going to exchange their cash flows for the future time period and that that is called essentially the swap contract so as you can see on the screen a swap is an agreement to exchange cash flows at specified future times according to certain specified rules now these rules are very very important and essential why because the entire exchange of the cash flows are based on the rules that you set while designing the contract so this exchange of the cash flows are based on some market variables maybe one or more than one market variables here the market variables are none other than your interest rate and your currency rate that is exchange rate these are the two market variables which we are going to discuss the essential utility of the swap contracts are actually converting your liability or investment into particular form so suppose you have fixed rate liability how you can convert your fixed rate liability into floating rate liability you can do it with the help of swap contract similarly you can convert your floating rate liability into fixed rate liability with the help of swap contracts if you look at by definition it is two counterparties they agree on certain contractual arrangements wherein they agree to exchange cash flows at a periodic intervals when we talk about interest interest rate swaps there are two types of interest rate swap contracts one is called single currency interest rate swap which is also known as plain vanilla that is fixed for floating swaps which are often called interest rate swaps in this a company agrees to pay a fixed rate on a notional principle in return of a floating rate from another company on same notional principle for same period why the principal amount is notional because there is no exchange of principal amount only exchange of interest amount is there and that's why the principal amount is termed as a notional principal which is used only for the calculation of the periodic interest rates for both the parties another type of swap contract is called cross currency interest rate swap this is also known as currency swaps this is also for fixed for fixed or floating for floating or fixed floor floating fixed for floating but here in the currency swap contract you can convert 
your one currency liability into another currency liabilities or your one currency investment into another currency investment wait we will see with the help of examples topic is relatively new for you guys so probably in the beginning you might not have that much idea but just wait we will discuss this at length now who do this swap bank swap bank is basically a generic terminology those commercial banks or international banks who facilitates the swap transactions are known as swap banks any financial institution or a bank can work as a swap bank swap bank normally work as a broker wherein they their role is limited to finding the counterparty for their clients but sometimes swap bank also work as a dealer so if the client is there and there is no counterparty available then swap bank himself become the counterparty that means dealer and complete the transactions as a broker their role is very limited in terms of matching the counterparties and hence they do not assume any risk of the contract they simply on the margin from both the parties but when they become the dealer that means they become the one side of the contract in that case they faces the risk also normally swap banks give the readily available quotes to their clients for various maturities the table on the screen you can see that various maturities and the bid rates and the offer rates quoted by the swap banks are given and various maturities these rates are available readily with any commercial bank that you deal with swap rate are the average rates of the bid and offer rates which is normally used to value the swap contracts let because say suppose this is a 5 year maturity swap contract but after 1 year if you want to value that contract the valuation of the swap contract that is altogether a different exercise that we will see later on but these swap rates are used for that purpose let's understand bit more on the quotes so fixed and a floating these different quotes which are given by the swap banks how do we understand them so in this particular table the bid rate and the offer rates are given but these are the fixed rate so fixed bid rate is there and fixed offer rate is there floating rates normally are not available because floating means what it is linked with the libor or mibor or any other uh, rate so libor is london interbank offer rate or mibor is mumbai interbank offer rate so in the floating rate liabilities normally we observe the rate today suppose we observe today's mibor mumbai interbank offer rate and that rate will be applicable for the next 6 month period for the liability that you create every 6 month the libor keeps on changing the mibor keeps on changing and hence your interest rate liability keeps on changing and that is called floating rate for a very normal understanding nowadays like home loans are linked with the marginal cost lending rate mclr so as mclr changes your home home loan rate also changes so this is just uh, you know helping you to understand <clears throat> these rates the quotes which is given by the banks are the fixed so what is bid the bid is a fixed rate in a contract where market maker will pay fixed and receive the 
floating. So who is the market maker? Swap bank is the market maker. So market maker means bank will pay the fixed rate in exchange of the floating rate from his client. While the offer rate is the fixed rate in a contract where bank will receive the fixed and pay the floating to the client. So this is how the arrangement is done. Swap rate is as I suggest you, it is the average of the bid and offer rate for the particular maturity. Now normally swap banks will tailor the terms of interest rates and currency swaps to customers need. And that is why swap contracts are known as OTC over the counter product. Like, like normally futures and options, they are exchange traded contracts. While swap is the OTC contract, over the counter contract. And banks are designing the contract as per the need of the client. Now, for better understanding of the interest rate swap, let us take an example. Now, in this example, let us assume plain vanilla interest rate swap for the purpose of understanding the swap contract. So, we have one party and that party name is Bank A. Bank A is one party which is triple A rated international bank located in the UK and who wishes to raise 10 million dollar to finance floating rate loan. Now bank's job is to give the loans and this bank has one uh, financing opportunity of funding the floating rate loan worth 10 million dollar. That means bank A need 10 million dollar funds. Now what bank A will do? Bank A have two options with them to raise the funds. Bank A is considering issuing five year fixed rate bonds at 10% and generate $10 million so that bank can give the funding to their client. But as you know that for bank A, the entire financing opportunity is floating rate loan. And hence, it would make more sense for bank A to issue floating rate bonds at LIBOR, that is London Interbank Offer Rate, to finance the loan. That means bank A has both the options with them. Now let's talk about another party. Now this party name is Form B. Now who is Form B? It is a triple B rated US company. It needs 10 million dollar to finance an investment with a five year economic life. Now for Form B, what kind of financing opportunity available to do this project? So Form B is considering issuing five year fixed rate bonds at 11.75%. These rates are hypothetical in nature to just understand the contract. Then alternatively Form B can raise the money by issuing five year floating rate bond at LIBOR plus half percent. So both the opportunities are there for the Form B also. But as you understand that Form B is doing investment in the capital budgeting kind of project and hence they prefer to borrow the fixed rate. Now if I summarize the borrowing opportunities of both the parties Bank A and Company B I can summarize in this table. So you can see that Bank A either can raise the fund through fixed rate with the 10% rate of interest or floating rate with the LIBOR. And company B, another counterparty, company B also can raise the fund 
through fixed rate, but the cost is 11.75%, while in floating, the cost is LIBOR plus 0.5%. Now, as you know that both these parties have a different cost for their funding opportunity, which is very common in nature. Because as in the beginning, you have observed that bank A is a triple A rated bank, while company B is a triple B rated. So the rating itself shows that the credit worthiness of the A is more than the B. And hence, the rate which is available to A for funding opportunities are more competitive than the B. And hence, you can see the differential bank A has 1.75% less interest in the fixed rate while 0.5% less interest in the floating rate. So bank A's competitiveness is more than the company B. Now, if you take the difference of difference, that is 1.75 minus 0.5, the difference of difference in the rate is 1.25%. So 125 basis point, this difference is known as QSD, Quality Spread Differential. I'll come to that, that how this QSD is essential in designing any swap contract. So, let us start with the understanding of the interest rate swap contracts. Bank A and company B both are approaching swap bank. Now, swap bank is a broker. Any financial institution <coughs> or commercial bank can work as a swap bank. So, bank A enter into the contract with the swap bank. And the contract is about what? You can see on the screen. The swap bank makes the offer to the bank A. And the offer is you pay LIBOR minus 1 by 8% per year on $10 million for 5 years. And we will pay you 10 by 10, 3 by 8% on 10 10 million dollar for five years so these rates are offered by the swap bank fine and what bank a will do bank a will get the funds from the open market at 10 percent now you can see that on the screen bank a raise the fund from the open market, this arrow at 10%. Fine. And then enter into a swap agreement with the swap bank. Under the agreement, swap bank will pay fixed rate of interest to the bank A and receive the floating rate from the bank A. This is an agreement. This agreement will be valid for the next five years. Now, you can see that Bank A created its original liability in the open market with the fixed rate 10% and then entered into the swap bank agreement. By doing so, what benefit bank a is going to receive let's look at that now here what is for bank a you can see here that 10 3 by 8 that is the rate received by the bank a from the swap bank 10 percent is the rate which is paid by the bank A in the open market and LIBOR minus 1 by 8 
is paid to the swap bank by the bank A. Now you can solve this equation. Minus 10, 3 by 8 plus 10 plus LIBOR minus 1 by 8. When you solve this equation, the result is LIBOR minus 1 by 2. Now you see this is floating rate. LIBOR, whenever there is a LIBOR, it's a floating rate. And LIBOR minus 1 by 2 is the net cost to the bank A, which is half percent better than they can borrow floating without a swap. That means now you compare. If bank A, instead of entering into the swap agreement, if they directly access the floating rate market, bank A must have paid LIBOR. But if they have entered into this agreement, their net cost is LIBOR minus 1 by 2 percentage. LIBOR minus 0 0.5 percentage. Hence, 10 million dollar into 0 0.5 percent that is $50,000. That's quite a handsome saving for bank A for the next 5 years. So you can understand just by entering into the swap contract, bank A could save $50,000 per year for the next 5 years and converted its fixed rate liability into a floating rate liability. Clear? Yeah. So, friends, try to understand. Bank A required floating rate liabilities. But what is better available to him is fixed rate. Because in the floating rate, the difference is only 0.5%. That is the only benefit. In the fixed rate, Bank A has a benefit of 1.75% less compared to B. Clear? So, you try to understand that bank A has a better opportunity in the open market with the fixed rate liability. And hence, bank A go with the fixed rate liability in the open market and then entered into an agreement with the swap bank wherein they fix up with the sum rates, which is there on the screen, fix and floating. And then at the end of the uh, you know, year, if you calculate your net liability of interest, which is turning out to be LIBOR minus 1 by 2%, which is lesser than the LIBOR. And that is the benefit for the bank A for entering into this interest rate swap agreement. Now, let us talk about the company B. So, swap bank and company B also enter into an agreement wherein swap bank makes this offer to company B that you pay us 10.5% per year on 10 million dollar for next 5 years and we will pay you LIBOR minus 1 by 4 percent per year on 10 million dollar for 5 years. So this is an agreement between Swap Bank and Company B wherein they are ready to exchange the cash flow clear at the predetermined rates and the fixed rate is 10.5 percent and the floating rate is LIBOR minus 0.25 percent. Clear? So this is the agreement. But the original liability of company B is floating rate liability and that floating rate liability is LIBOR plus 0.5 percent. So here what happened is company B borrow externally at LIBOR plus 1 by 2 percentage and then entered into the swap agreement and now let's see 
what is there for company B. So you look at the arrow and then calculate what is the net cost. So you see company B paying 10.5% to swap bank. So 10.5 that is a cost. Then it also pays to open market externally LIBOR plus half percent. So plus LIBOR plus half percent and receive LIBOR minus 0.25%. So that is a minus sign LIBOR minus 0.25 or 1 by 4. Now if you solve this equation then the net is 11.25 because when you solve it LIBOR LIBOR get cancelled and what you get is the 11.25. Now when you see 11.25 there is no mention of any floating rate here. That means your liability is fixed 11.25. Now you see if company B would have directly approached the open market then what will be the cost? The cost would be 11.75%. But if they have done swap agreement then their cost is 11.25. That means half percent or 0.5% savings on 10 million dollar for next 5 years and that is 50,000 dollar per year savings for the company B. And friends this is the benefit for the company B. Now you can see both the bank A also saved 50,000 dollar per year for the next five years company B also saves $50,000 per year for the next five years and that is the beauty of the swap contract A saves 1 by 2 percentage B saves 1 by 2 percentage. Now what is there for the swap bank? Swap bank is a facilitator. Swap bank is a broker. So you can look at the arrow what swap bank paid and what swap bank received from bank A. Similarly, what swap bank paid to company B and what swap bank received from the company B. Now, if you solve this equation, what they paid and what they received, then the net savings for the swap bank is 1 by 4, that is 0.25%. And if you calculate 1 by 4 percentage of 10 million dollar it is turned out to be 25,000 dollar per year for the next five years for the swap bank. Now you see it is a win-win situation for everybody. A is saving, B is saving, swap bank is also making money. So you look at the total savings done by the all three parties 1 by 2 plus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 4. So total is 1.25 percentage or 125 basis point. And this is none other than your QSD that is your quality spread differentials. So this web bank actually helping everyone. It is a win-win-win situation for all the three parties to reduce the cost of their funding and how efficiently bank A converted its fixed rate liability, external liability, fixed rate liability into a floating rate liability and how efficiently company B converted its floating rate liability into a fixed rate liability. So this is the beauty of interest rate swap contracts. Now let me tell you why win 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 for everyone it is only because of the qsd so quality spread differential that represents the potential gains from the swap contract that can be shared between the counterparties and the swap bank here we assumed equal gain for the a and b that is 50 basis point but there is no reason to presume that the gains will be shared equally. As you know that 
the bargaining power of bank a is more in this case bank a may demand higher share of the benefit that all depends on the terms of the contract because bank a is a triple a rated bank so they will say they might say that okay we need 70 basis point and bank or company b the counterparty may uh, may get the 30 basis point in that case so that all depends that how the sharing of the gain is there because it is all over the counter contract so it is the bargaining power of the counterparties that actually determines the share uh, of the total gain now how this cash flow is calculated so I'm, I'm just uh, showing you the three year swap contract, which is say initiated on March 5, 2001. Let's say the agreement between Microsoft and the bank. So here in the agreement, Microsoft is about to receive six month LIBOR and pay the fixed rate of 5% per annum every six month for the three years on the notional principle of say 100 million dollar so in this case i'm just showing you that how the cash flow exchange is calculated and taking place so your agreement starts on march 5 2001 clear so on that day you will be observing the libor that is london interbank offer rate that is a floating rate now this libor that you observe 4.2 percent will be applicable for the next six months of time so from march to september the 4.2 is the floating rate which is applicable in exchange of fixed rate that is five percent so if you calculate interest amount on 100 million dollar with the rate of 4.2 the next six month time period microsoft is about to receive 2.10 million dollars and has to pay 2.50 million dollars because microsoft is paying fixed and receive floating because that is an agreement so it will receive 2.10 and pay 2.5 so net cash flow is 0 0.5, 0 0.40 negative. So 0 0.4 million dollar outflow would be there for the Microsoft for the first six month period. Now the LIBOR is not fixed. It keeps on changing. So next six month you will observe the new LIBOR. It is say 4.8 and that will be applicable for the calculation of the floating rate interest amount for the next six months of time and that's how you can see this arrow that how the floating rate interest will be calculated based on the observations of LIBOR at the particular time period this fixed rate liability is fixed five percent so six months it is 2.5 clear and that is a fixed liability and based on the LIBOR either you have a cash outflow or cash inflow for the uh, exchange of the cash flows so friends this cash flow is calculated in this way under the swap contracts now let's have this example for you companies a and b have offered following rates for the five year loans so you can see that A can get the funds from the open market at fixed rate with the 12% rate of interest while for the floating rate it can get LIBOR plus 10 basis point. What is available to company B? Fixed rate 13.4% and floating rate LIBOR plus 0.6%. Now you can understand that A has a comparative advantage in 
फिक्स रेट एज वेल एज फ्लोटिंग रेट बट इन द फिक्स रेट इट हैज एडवांटेज ऑफ 1.4 पॉइंट फोर इन द फ्लोटिंग रेट इट हैज एडवांटेज ऑफ 0.5 पॉइंट ओनली दैट मींस इट मेक्स सेंस फॉर द ए टू जनरेट फंड्स फ्रॉम द ओपन मार्केट एट अ फिक्स रेट बट वॉट इट रिक्वायर्स ए रिक्वायर्स फ्लोटिंग रेट लोन Now, what is best available in the open market is fixed rate, while what I need is a floating rate, and that is where the swap contracts will help me. I can directly go with the floating rate, but then I am not getting the enough benefit in terms of my cost, and hence you can understand that the swap agreement would definitely help a. to reduce the cost in the floating rate and that means the swap agreement must results into floating rate of less than libor plus 0.1% same is the case with the b b what is best available actually compared to a b is paying more B is paying 1.4 percent higher in fixed rate and 0.5 percent higher in floating rate, but B is only additional 0.5 percent paying in the floating rate. So for B, which is more beneficial is a floating rate, but B requires. Look at the slide. B requires fixed rate loan. what is best is floating rate here also for b it makes sense to enter into the swap agreement to convert its floating rate liability into fixed rate liability clear so this is the essence that you need to understand with the data which is presented on the slide so friends you can see this both the parties approaching swap bank now swap bank is a broker and as you know that swap bank has asked for 0.1% margin now what do you mean by 0.1% margin it is 10 basis point margin that they need fine so how they will frame the contract so let's look at the solution for your better understanding so in the solution first of all you need to understand the difference between the spreads and here as i said 1.4 and 0.5 in the fixed rate the difference is 1.4 in the floating rate the difference was 0.5 and the difference of difference is 0.9 that is 90 basis point that means there is a qsd and because of that we can design a swap contract a has a comparative advantage in fixed rate but wants wants to borrow floating b has a comparative advantage in floating rate but wants to borrow fixed and now see this is what uh, the basis for you know entering into the agreement what i need is not available to me what is available which is cheaper but i don't need it so it is a very simple thing i will ask a to get the funds which is cheaply available to them i'll also ask b to get the funds which is cheaply available to him and then they exchange their interest rate liabilities this is what precisely we are going to do in the solution this 90 basis point of qsd out of this 10 basis point will be taken by the swap banks so remaining 80 basis point will be shared equally to both the parties a and b now as i say it is not necessary that sharing will be on the equal basis but here for the understanding we will assume that the sharing is on the equal basis so this is the solution 
of the interest rate swap contract. Now in this solution, you can easily see that bank, swap bank is giving quotes to the A and the quote is what? 12.3% fixed in exchange of LIBOR. And swap bank also gives a quotes to the B that is 12.4% fixed rate in exchange of the LIBOR. Now look at the arrow. Arrow will tell you that whether the money is coming in or cash flow is in or out. So here A goes to the open market and get the funds through fixed rate that is 12% what is available to him and then enter into the agreement with the given rates. So net cost to the company A you can calculate here 12 minus 12.3 plus LIBOR. So the net cost is LIBOR minus 0.3% and which is less than LIBOR plus 0.1. You can say if bank a, a company A directly approaches to the floating rate market, company A has to pay LIBOR plus 0.1%. But because of this agreement, company A's net liability is LIBOR minus 0.3%. So 0.4% benefit to the company A. Now similarly, look at the company B. Company B also have same benefits. So company B is going in the open market with the rate of LIBOR plus 0.6. So that is a cost. Then it also pays fixed rate to the bank, swap bank, that is 12.4 and receive LIBOR. So if it receives, it is a minus sign. Now if you sort out this equation, the net is 13%. That means in this net, there is no LIBOR. So B has converted its floating rate liability into a fixed rate liability. And this fixed rate liability is less than what if it actually access the direct market. In the direct market, company B has a liability of 13.4%. But here, the liability is only 13%. So 0.4%, 40 basis point benefit. So company A, company B, both are getting the benefit of 40, 40 basis point. What is there for the swap bank? Swap bank, you can calculate here on the screen itself. LIBOR is coming, LIBOR is going. So it is cancelled. 12.4% they are receiving and only paying 12.3%. So here, 0.1%, 10% is the benefit that Swap bank is also getting. So this is the win-win-win situation for all three parties. That is party A, party B and Swap Bank also. So friends, uh, this is uh, the interest rate Swap transactions that I have shown you. Now, the valuation of the Swap contracts are also done later on. At initiation, the interest rate Swap is worth zero because it is equally attractive to both the parties. If it is not equally attractive, parties would not have entered into the contract. But later on, later on, the interest rate structure changes in the economy and hence the contract may be of more value to one party and may be of less value to another party. But you have to do the valuations. So, there are different uh, models for the valuations or the alternative methods are there. So you can value considering them as a bond, like what we do in the bond valuation, fixed rate bond valuation, floating rate bond valuation. You can do in that way or you can also consider them as a FRA, that is a forward rate agreements, fine. And with the help of, uh, you know, bonds or 
considering them as frauds, you can value the interest rate swap contracts. So friends, I think uh, uh, the time is there. So we will uh, wind up here and I'm sure that you must have got the insights on the interest rate swap contracts uh, for you. Similar uh, understanding can be developed for the currency swap contracts. Uh, so I think uh, let me show you the brief on the currency swaps also. I'll skip certain slides because of the paucity of time. I will directly take you to the currency swaps contract. Now in the interest rate swap contract, our notional principle was the same currency because here you are either dealing in the dollar or INR or pound, something like that. But in the currency swap contract, it is an agreement in which principal and interest both are exchanged. Principal amounts are exchanged at the beginning and at the end of the contract while the interest is exchanged periodically. So currency swaps are used to convert a liability from one currency into another currency or investment from one currency to another currency. So interest rate swaps and currency swaps you compare then in the interest rate swap the principal is not exchanged it is called notional principal while in the currency swap the principal amount is also exchanged in the beginning as well as in the at the end so this is a major difference let's look at the example of the currency swap contract so let's understand that a u.s multinational corporation wants to finance 10 million pound expansion of a british plant now it's a u.s company and want to expand in british so they need funds in the pound they could borrow dollars in the US where they are well known and exchange the dollars for the pound. That is a very simple solution. Clear? Or alternatively, what they can do? They could borrow pounds in the international market. But if they borrow pounds, they have to pay higher because they are not known in the international market. They are known in the domestic country. So if they raise fund in the domestic currency, the cost of funding is less. But there is a huge exchange rate risk because you are financing a pound sterling project with the dollars. And hence, it gives a huge exchange rate risk. So it makes sense <clears throat> for the US MNC to raise funds in the international bond market in the pound itself but then it is a costly affair now you are another party here there is a british mnc with a mirror image financing requirement now see this is very important for the currency swaps you need a counterparty with the similar requirements so here suppose if you uh, assume any exchange rate i'm assuming say a uh, one pound is 1.6 dollar in that case suppose this british firm wanting to finance dollar borrowing in the amount of say 16 million dollar that is equivalent to 10 million pound fine so in this case you know this both the companies a and b clear they have a kind of financing requirement which is same in the size clear but their requirements are exactly opposite in nature. That means US based company need funding in the UK currency or UK based company funding requirement is in the US currency. So both firm wishes to finance a project in each other countries of the same size and their opportunities are summarized in this table. That means if company A 
raise funds in US, it pays say 8% rate of interest. And if it raise funds in the international market, say in UK, then it pays 11.6% rate of interest. Same is the case with the company B. Company B can raise fund in US 10% rate of interest and in UK 12% rate of interest. Now let's analyze these borrowing opportunities and then look at this swap agreement. Now this is a very small swap agreement. Now what is best available to company A? Company A is a US company. So in US it got a good rate 8%. So company A will raise the fund from the US market at 8% and then enter into the deal with the swap bank wherein swap bank agrees to pay 8% on dollar and receive 11% on the pound. That is an agreement between company A and the swap bank. Now because of this agreement there is some benefit to the company A but before that let's look at what kind of agreement done by the company B with the swap bank. So company B also enter into the agreement with the swap bank wherein swap bank agree to pay 12% on pound and agree to receive 9.4% on the dollar. Fine. So this is the agreement between swap bank and company A, swap bank and company B. And both the companies are generating their funds in their local currency. Company A is a US based company. So generating funds in the dollar at 8% while company B is a UK based company. So generating funds in pound at 12% rate of interest. Now let's analyze what is the net cost. So if you look at the net position of the company A US based company. So you say dollar 8 coming dollar 8 going. So dollar 8 plus dollar 8 minus it goes away. So what is net cost is 11% pound. Now you compare if you compare then 11.6 is the direct cost while with the swap contract the cost is 11 only. That means A saves 6 0.6%. 0.6% is the net saving for the company A. Here company A is converting its dollar liability into pound liability with the better rate. Better rate means if it directly goes it gives 11.6 but through the swap contract it only gives 11% and that's how the savings of 0.6% on the pound. Look at this, B's net position, 12% on pound coming in, 12% on pound coming out, so it get cancelled. So the net is 9.4%, 9.4% dollar. Now look at the direct market cost. The direct market cost was 10%, 10% on the dollar. But through the swap contract, the dollar cost is 9.4%. That means B also saves 0.6%. And here company B is converting its pound liability into dollar liability. So friends, this is the savings for both A and B 0.6, 0.6. What about the swap bank? Swap bank also makes money, but Swap bank is receiving two lakh twenty four thousand dollar against one lakh pound. Here, Swap bank is actually assuming bit of exchange risk, which is not in the case of interest rate swap contract earlier. Here, Swap bank actually funding, you know, one point four percent of 16 million dollar financed with 1% of 10 million pound per year for the next five years. So Swap Bank faces exchange rate risk but it is a broker and hence they 
can lay it off with another swap agreement or they can enter into the forward agreements to uh, manage their uh, this particular risk but for swap bank also there is a benefit in the currency swap contract so friends the currency swap the interest rate swaps both can be possible the essential idea is there has to be a quality spread differentials if qsd exists then definitely the qsd can be shared either equally or on negotiation basis with all the parties the comparative advantage is the basis for the swap contract now you can see that what is the comparative advantage for a a is more credit worthy a pays 2% less to borrow in dollar than b a pays 0.4% less to borrow in pound than b you can see this a has a comparative advantage in borrowing dollars but a require pounds comparative advantage in dollars but they need funding in pound clear so that's the reason what is available at a better rate to them is the dollar but what they need is pound and that is where that is why the swap agreement is required b also has a comparative advantage in borrowing pounds b pays 2% more in uh, uh, you know dollars than the a while b pays only 0.4% more to borrow in pounds that means b has a comparative advantage in borrowing in pound so you know a has a comparative advantage in borrowing in dollars while b has a comparative advantage in borrowing in pounds and that is the reason the swap agreement is possible clear yeah. so i think uh, now you would have understood this uh, swap agreements now this is a plain vanilla uh, that we have understood there are lot of variations of basic currency and interest rate swaps in the market because it is a over the counter product you could find variety of contracts within currency swaps you could observe fix for fix fix for floating floating for floating in interest rates also similar uh, <clears throat> kind of variations are available but for any swap contract to be possible what you need is a quality spread differentials beyond that once you know what is the qsd available then creativity is the only limit the the rates which are i drawn on the diagram these are all negotiated negotiated rates so actually parties are negotiating parties are negotiating with each other and based on the negotiations they are determining the rates so it is a creativity and then what is your bargaining power whether you are a triple a rated or whether you are a triple b rated based on that negotiations are taking place similar uh, you can do the valuations of the currency swap contracts also but because of the time constraints uh, we are not going into the valuation part but you can do valuations either as a fra forward rate agreement or you can do valuations either uh, as a bond so the same thing is applicable this is a small example uh, for you to understand it uh, i think this is the example if you are watching my video right now you can try uh, you take up a piece of paper and pen with you and you can try this and try to understand which party has a comparative advantage whether party a has a comparative advantage in a uh, canadian dollar or the us dollar whether party b has a comparative advantage in us dollar or canadian dollar and then uh, you can do this so friends i am uh, giving you this for the homework that you can solve solve this problem yourself take a pause here solve the problems fine and then try to understand the swap contracts the solution is here in the slides but uh, i am not going to discuss it right now you can solve it later on and try to understand 
so these swaps are similar to the forwards basically you know swap can be regarded as a series of forward contract because there is a interval time interval every six month there is exchange of the cash flow so it's i mean a bundle of forward contracts now what kind of risk in the interest rates and currency swaps so as you understand from this discussion there are variety of risk the well, the first is the interest rate risk and the exchange rate risk these two are very very critical in any of the swap contracts fine but along with that there is a basis risk and the basis risk is nothing but the floating rates of the two counterparties are not packed the same index then there is a basis risk that means my packing is with libor and your packing is with some other say mibor pibor or any other rate then there is a chance of basis risk then there is a credit risk also now what this credit risk is it is none other than the default of any of the counterparties if you enter into the agreement with any counterparty and the counterparty defaults then there is a huge credit risk involved into the swap contracts mismatch risk is finding the similar mirror image party counterparty for you and that requires lot of uh, you know time uh, you know to getting the 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 exact party but yes swap uh, brokers are there commercial banks are there or the, any other international institutions are there those who are helping to finding out the counterparties and in the case of currency risk we should not ignore the sovereign risk because you know that the country will impose any sort of exchange restrictions as you know that currently you know the ukraine war that has created a lot of sovereign risk lot of uh, restrictions on the the movement of funds etc so that also poses a risk in the swap contract as long as credit risk is concerned a uh, swap is worth zero to a company initially then later on depending on the 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 movement of rates it could be either positive value or it is a negative value the company has a credit risk exposure only when the value of the contract is positive if the value is negative and counterparty defaults then it is a windfall gain for you fine so potential losses from the default on currency swaps are greater than on interest rate swaps the reason is the exchange of principal at the end of life of the swaps because in the case of interest rate swaps the principal is notional but in the case of currency swaps there is an exchange of principal in the beginning as well as at the end and hence the greater risk the greater credit risk in the currency swap contracts then finally market risk versus credit risk so market risk arises from the possibility that market variable will move in such a way that value of the swap becomes negative for the company while credit risk arises from the possibility of a default by the counterparty when the value of the contract is positive so friends thank you thank you very much i am sure that uh, you would have a little understanding on the swap contracts thank you thank you hrdc gujarat university for giving me this opportunity to uh, deliver my session on currency and interest rate swaps thank you